In this video, I will be showing how I convert my Roundhouse KT to run a tender. Now, Roundhouse KTs in kit form or built from the factory don't come with a tender, but I like the idea of occasionally running with a tender and it is very easy to do with the draw bar and drag beam from Roundhouse, which I will post the part number on screen. They come ready painted black and it costs around £16 plus postage and works very well. Um, so if we move the tender aside, show you the back of the locomotive. As they are built, they have this buffer beam, which have all added a couple extra details, which is the Swift 16 buffer and vacuum hose, brake hose. Now, this part here replaces that to pull the tender. Now, with KT, I had a few choices of tenders. Um, I was thinking about uh, a Roundhouse Fowler tender or a Roundhouse George tender. Both, the George tender looked a bit square for a KT locomotive being quite rounded with this saddle tank and the Fowler bogey tender was qu quite oversized but I did find on Facebook marketplace which my wife kindly bought me for my birthday was a second hand billy tender which I think suits Katie very well being as it has quite a rounded bottom here now these come with a square, a small square buffer beam, which I replaced with a spare buffer beam that came with the chassis kit from a locomotive. And I just bought another buffer beam overlay, which has the extra rivet details, painted it red, fitted it. And I think that looks better than the smaller square one. And also painted the tender to match my locomotive. Did a few more details as well, like painting the inner, inner bits of the wheels, repainting the resin coal load, which looks quite good. So, if I bring in the locomotive again, I'll show you how I now remove this buffer beam and add the draw bar. Now it involves standing the locomotive up carefully on its buffer beam. So hopefully should be, now I need to remove the buffer first. So hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you've got the right size spanner. Uh, is that side. So just loosen that off. Need to remove the buffer to get to the bolt above it, which is attaches the bolt uh, the body to the buffer beam. So if I can unwind this, should come in now. can see that very well. So then once this bolt is removed, I can then sl slide this out. I can put the mo locomotive back down because you don't want to be holding it by the body when I remove this 
bolts here because it's one of only two fix and it holds the body to the chassis. You don't want to accidentally have this chassis drop out at the back. So if I remove that first. So that's that hole there is tapped, but these ones usually come with a nut, but I've bought and fitted after grinding down one side two thumb nuts and then glued them into position for them to become captive nuts. So it saves a lot of faffing around trying to hold the locomotive or holding a bolt or trying to fix a nut on at the same time. So making them captive makes it far easier. Well, generally I just put these in finger tight to make them easier to remove. But sometimes it can be a bit stiff so I might have to put a spanner on them if I can find the right one. Um, do my parts. These ones should fit. Scuffing the paint. Now I should have put these bolts after I painted them through the oven, hardened them off, but it's not going to be a problem to touch up the paint. So once I've got this buffer beam off, I'll show you the captive nuts that I made. Now that one is free now, and then all you have to do is just carefully slide that down. Of course this bit here goes over the top of the buffer beam, so you can slide it in and out behind there. Put that to one side, and hopefully I can show you the captive nuts that I added. So if I carefully tip the locomotive on its side, can you see them there? I had to grind one side down on a belt sander so they would fit, but they work a lot better than fiddling about with a, a nut while trying to hold everything together and hold the weight of the locomotive as well. So now all that's out, we can now fit the drawbar and buffer beam. So if I take that bolt out, and then all you'll do is slide it up. So there. We've got one bolt that goes through there. Which holds the body onto the beam. If I move it forward a bit, you can see the multiple holes for different radiuses or track radii. So obviously if you're running a tighter radii you move it out to the outer hole and there's also two or three holes on the inside so there's quite a lot of adjustment there. So that's them and I've got two and these are M3 bolts, which I get from um, a company on the internet called Spalding Fasteners. And they do have an eBay shop, but it's far cheaper to buy it direct from them. They literally cost pence, and they're stainless steel. And, they're, and I prefer to use um, hexagon bolts instead of the old slot screws which you know and me tend to generally strip out when they look horrendous so again I just do these finger tight because they're not gonna rattle loose on when it's running because rails are pretty smooth 
you see how big gaps in between your tracks. Do that one with a good tight. There we go, that's them three. And if I move the locomotive to there, and then you can see on the tender, there's a peg just here that slots in to one of the holes. I think I generally have it in the middle hole for my radius track because I do have it quite tight tight turns but yeah now that is ready to go ready to run with its tender when i want it to and then when i want to run it without in just three bolts slide it off put the buffer beam back on three bolts and then bolt the buffer back in so there you go, let's just show you that, because I do like to run it both without the tender and with, just to make things interesting, every steam up a bit different, and it's quite easy to do. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting, so thanks for watching. We'll see you again.